tonight. We're in Leeds, we're at the Carriage Works. This is another cutting edge lecture. We're going to be finding out the science behind triathlon. <laughs> Triathlon, I think, is probably one of the techiest uh, of sports. So it's going to be a really interesting audience tonight. Um, I expect we're going to have a lot of questions about what's best practice, what's best science, what's the best techie things, the best hot tips out there on the street for our elite athletes that these people can take and go out and use out there in the field when they're competing. We've got some elite athletes with us tonight. We've got Sarah Springman. She was a competitor, come all the way across from Zurich, and she's going to talk about her experience. We've got Steph Forrester up from Loughborough. She was at an Olympic Games, so another elite competitor. She's going to tell us about a, a more recent experience of competition and the science that she's doing. We've also got Rob Hall. He's from Cambridge University, and he's going to be talking about sensors and how we measure what the athlete does. Triathlon is, at the most basic level, swimming, cycling and running. Um, distances can vary um, tremendously. We have to get into the water to start off with, absolute melee at the start, lots of people wanting to go in the same direction. You're racing to the first buoy, which is typically a few hundred metres away. Typically you'll get there with a lot of other people all trying to take this corner at the same time. A few punches are thrown, you might get kicked or punched in the face. And as we come to the very end of the swim, we're thinking about what we're going to do in the transition. Off with your wetsuit and your cap and goggles, on with your helmet and, and you're off on your bike. We go round the bike course, thinking about the tactics, are we going to make a break, plan for the transition again, think again how you're going to put your bike away, when you're going to take your helmet off, put your running shoes on, and then you'll be out on the run and ready to make your sprint for the line at the end. And of course, for the longer distance races, you have to remember drinking and eating as well. She won three European individual, five European team gold medals in triathlon for uh, Team GB. Please give a big welcome to Sarah Springman. I was very interested in sports science at the very beginning. I wanted to try and understand how I could run, swim and bike faster, more efficiently and for longer. And so I was quite keen to try new things. I used the new aero bars that were brought in by Boone Lennon. They were quite funny. They had a sort of a, a dip in the front and then the, the, they came up. And so the idea was you would then be in a new position down here. It was a risk to try and use those, but it was much faster. Keep going. Okay, you can almost do my microwave now. What we want to do is we want to give people an insight into the kind of work that goes on behind the scenes, whether it's a, a scientist, whether it's a technologist, the coach or the athlete. And between 1999 and 2005, she had a world top 10 ranking and was lucky enough to appear at the Sydney 2000 Olympics. Please, could you welcome Steph Forrester? A little bit of summary of my career. It has kind of in the early days fluctuated between sport and research. And currently now it's settled into sports research, which is kind of perfect middle ground for me. Because of my biomechanics background, I'm just very interested in sort of the relationship between the foot and the footwear. Currently, the main topic in footwear is whether we've gone too far in terms of the technology we've put into footwear. So whether adding all the cushioning and stability and motion control features that have been progressively added into footwear over the past 30, 40 years is actually helping performance and helping comfort and helping safety. Uh, well, I, I found it difficult not to get involved in the barefoot running debate, really. These are just fabric and a sole, so there's no support in them. The evidence is currently saying that we're just getting injured just as often now as we did 20 or 30 or 40 years ago. So the question is, are these shoes actually doing a good job for us or not? So we can get the shoes designed with specific features get athletes to run in them and basically find out detailed biomechanics of how the shoe design actually affects the running. So as you can see, the, the guy's got a number of retroreflective markers placed all over his body at specific landmarks. Um, so that lets us 
pick up details about his biomechanics, we can analyse his technique in a lot of detail and see what effect the shoes are having on them. We've been leading the developments. The cyclists have been sort of slightly following along behind us. Wetsuits these days, it's so easy to get out of them. In my day, it was a real fight. On the cycling, people have uh, strain gauges on their cranks. They can record it. They have GPS sensors so they can see where they're going so that they can tell what their speed is. So you can look at your efficiency and say, I wasted energy, calories and whatever here. The cameras today, Dartfish and all of those things, allow you to look at your biomechanics, everything that you're doing. And there's a lot more that can be done in the future. So in the red, we have oxygen uptake, and in the blue, we have carbon dioxide production. Carbon dioxide. For me, these, okay. these kind of evenings are really important because they, they bring together the passion of science and the passion of sport, and they put them together, and you get a really, really excited, enthusiastic audience. I thought it was uh, fascinating, some very interesting explanation about what's going on in terms of sort of the research in technology and some very thought-provoking discussion about where the boundaries are, sort of ethical boundaries are. We just go out, cycle as hard as we can, swim as hard as we can, and run as hard as we can. But you don't know if you're doing it the right way. But to listen to them, maybe you can train not as much, but get more out of it. It was nice to see some of the some of the actual practical practicalities of testing, and maybe trying to think about how that might uh, apply to the layperson, because uh, a lot of people don't really know what we do in sports science. It's inspirational just listening to what people can do, and um, and that's what it's all about. <laughs>